Hi, I'm Russ with fit to score Today we're going to talk about golf shaft stiffness. We've been taught to understand golf shafts as having stiffness. In this video, I'm going to give you some insight about what stiffness means. It's not as simple as many golfers hope it might be. The human condition seeks to create simplicity out of complexity. The golf shaft is complex. Golf shaft companies explain shafts to the golfer and golf professionals in the simplest possible way. The understanding of golf shafts is ever evolving and that evolution is ongoing at the shaft companies themselves. To truly understand the shaft, we must look at shaft profiles. We understand the term profile, it's simply the outline of a shape. Shaft profiles are just that, an outline of how the golf shaft bends. Here we see EI profiles from the Nippon website explaining the difference between the MODIS three shafts. Nippon and Mitsubishi have embraced showing golfers their products from the shaft engineer's perspective. Shaft bending profiles are defined by EI charts. We'll explain EI charts later in this video. Golfers and their club makers have been measuring how a golf shaft bends as long as there have been club makers. The first profile tool that I knew of was a deflection board. I've seen the deflection board used by Hogan's club maker in the UST R&D lab. This is a modern version of that instrument made by golf mechanics. The shaft is clamped at the handle here and a weight is applied at the tip. And you can see how this shaft is bending down and this happens to be an X-flex shaft and I've marked on this board X-flex and I've traced along here where this X-flex shaft lies. Now I'm going to change the shaft and I'm going to put on an S-flex shaft. And what's important as you do this is that you maintain what I would call the beam length or the section from this part of the clamp to the tip where you're going to apply the weight. And with this shaft on and the weight applied, you see that it comes to my S mark. So this is an S flex shaft. Let's put on an R flex now. So now with the R flex shaft installed, we can see that it comes down to this mark. Now this is actually a very, very effective way of measuring golf shaft stiffness. In fact, there is a much more sophisticated version of this machine used by many of the golf club OEMs. And shaft companies that want to supply shafts to them have to use exactly the same machine. So this is not what we would call an obsolete standard. This is actually used inside the business. I'm going to take a graphite design shaft now and put it on the board. And this is an S-Flex. So here we have a graphite design, TP. This is the 2016-2017 um, latest shaft from graphite design, S-Flex shaft, and lo and behold, it falls very, very close to that S-Flex mark that we saw in the Mitsubishi shafts. So, you know, that goes to say that if you're, in fact, selling shafts to the club-making business, that there are some standards that are established with deflection boards and that shaft companies actually meet those standards. Now, let's look at an old shaft. I found this shaft in the shop. This is a Speeder 553 from maybe seven, eight years ago, maybe older than that. Let's put that on the board. It's an R-Flex and see where it falls. And look at that, this old R-Flex shaft is sitting between R and S. Well, what is that saying to us? It's saying basically that over time, the definition of R has gotten a little lower. So shafts have gotten a little bit softer over time. Okay, so as you've seen, the shaft is clamped at the handle, a weight is put on the tip, and the shaft bends. The amount of bend is red from the chart behind the shaft and the number is assigned to a stiffness, or more commonly a letter, 
L, A, R, S, or X. What one decides each of these letters mean is arbitrary, and there was no way to automate this process. But actually, a few years ago, advances in cameras made it possible to image the shaft while deflecting it and analyze the image. But that image is not much different than a deflection board used by Hogan's Club Maker many years ago. Deflection boards remain a low-cost way to rate over all shaft stiffness. More precise deflection instruments are used by many club companies and by the shaft companies that supply them. For some club companies, they are the standard. This particular board is sold by Golf Mechanics, and it looks like they might be getting discontinued due to lack of interest. As of the making of this video, the site says seven left. As technology came to the golf business, Dr. Joe Braley introduced a new method of measuring stiffness, frequency. A rod stiffness can be measured by frequency. A limitation of deflection boards is that they did not give a number. Frequency instruments are digital and translate stiffness into a number. Here you see some of the latest instruments from golf mechanics. For those of you that have never seen a frequency instrument, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. Put the shaft up against the backstop and engage the pneumatic clamp. Pneumatic clamps are important if you want to have consistent reading because clamping pressure can affect frequency. Take a weight, apply it to the tip. Now, what you see here are different weights that have been used at different times by different people or on different machines. The problem that we see here is that because frequency is a function of weight, different weights would produce different frequency numbers, making it impossible to establish what a frequency number meant in terms of stiffness. To address that issue, an organization called the PCS created a calibration rod for a particular version of frequency machines, and you would put this rod in your machine, get its number, and then, comp then using this number that was on your rod, index the software so that different users of their software could compare frequency numbers from machine to machine. So I have the rod with the tip weight on it inserted in the machine. I'm going to put it into oscillation and then I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to get the frequency number. Now you see this table shaking a little bit. If this were in the shop this would be on a very very stable table because simple things like table vibration can affect frequency. So that's it. That's how you use a frequency machine. The idea of using frequency to rate golf shafts was discussed in Search for the Perfect Swing by Alistair Cochran and John Stobbs, first published in 1968. My copy is the second printing from 2005. Here is the text from Appendix 1, page 230, showing the textbook formula for converting the rate of vibration of a rod to stiffness. This is an eyeful. Let's take it part by part. What they said in 1968 was that using frequency to measure stiffness requires the cross-section of the shaft. That is, the outer diameter minus the inner diameter. I know of no club maker that has taken that into consideration when comparing shafts with frequency. They go on to point out that textbook frequency formulas apply to beams of uniform cross-section. Golf shafts are anything but uniform. Where does that leave using frequency to rate shaft stiffness? Here are the EI charts of three shafts, which have the same frequency. As you can see, using frequency to rate golf shaft stiffness does not work. It is actually correct only when shafts being compared are much the same. But with dissimilar shafts, well, the math comes up short. To this day, no one using frequency has addressed this issue, that the golf shafts vary along their length. Nevertheless, there are a lot of frequency instruments in use. This one is about as good as it gets. It has a pneumatic clamp, assuring that clamp pressure is the same on every measurement. It has a backstop, 
assuring that the shaft gets inserted in exactly the same position on every measurement. It uses a photocell to get an accurate reading of frequency. I use it to compare overall shaft stiffness of the hard and soft side of a shaft. The comparison of these two numbers is a quantifiable measurement of the roundness and hence the quality of the shaft. Take note here, I'm comparing two planes of the same shaft. For this, frequency is a valid tool. But when comparing different shafts, it's not on a solid mechanical engineering foundation. The golf business, meaning the engineering staff of the shaft companies and club companies, understand the limitations of frequency. In fact, a shaft company R&D director spent some time with me years ago explaining those limitations. Then he introduced me to the huge range of deflection instruments used in the golf business. Several years ago, I went through the tour vans at a PGA Tour event and did not see a single frequency instrument in any of those vans. Okay, I've spent enough time talking about frequency. Let's move on to EI. The golf business uses sectional measurement to create a bending profile or an outline of how a shaft bends, and many of them illustrate their products to the golfer with artistic representations of bending profiles on their website. In fact, this is directly from the Mitsubishi website. What you notice on these charts is the term EI. Mizuno uses EI profiles in their training materials for fitters and their sales reps. I'm going to briefly explain EI and then how it can be used to rate golf shaft stiffness. This illustration was created by my friend and mentor, Dave Tudelman. EI of a beam is basic textbook mechanical engineering. A beam is supported on the two ends and a load is placed in the center. The deflection created by the load or the load needed to create a given amount of deflection is measured and put into the formula you see here on the screen. E is the elasticity of the material. When mechanical engineers use this formula, E is looked up in a table. Building and bridge designers need to know how the structures they design will react to load. However, in a golf shaft, E can change. In steel shafts, annealing can change elasticity. In composite, the type of material used as well as its orientation changes elasticity. I, in simple terms, is the cross-section of the shaft. Going back to the appendix that we looked at earlier, the formula for cross-section of a tube is noted as a caution when using frequency. To measure golf shafts, I changes from point to point down the shaft. It is the inner diameter subtracted from the outer diameter. Golf shafts are tapered tapered on both the inner and outer walls. So along the 10 inch section, typically used to profile a golf shaft, it is different everywhere. Before I move on, I'll make one last comment about using frequency to profile golf shafts. Given the complex nature of the golf shaft, using a frequency instrument to profile a shaft was not done correctly. Here's why. Force is a function of length and load. The frequency profiles done in the past used a constant weight but applied it at different lengths. This increased the force at the butt and decreased it at the tip. The strain gauge instrument used was actually not adequate to give reliable readings at the tip. And this fact was known to one of the founders of the process. The charts produced showed the tip having higher frequency and are curved in a misleading direction. Let's go back to EI. We have both elements of this formula changing point to point. So we load a 10 inch beam, measure deformation, and express the result as EI because neither can be easily defined in a golf shaft. If you want to learn more about EI, there are technical articles at Golf Shaft Reviews. EI charts are common. We've seen this chart before. Several shaft companies, Nippon and Mitsubishi, have used them for years on their websites. In 2016, EI charts became part of Mizuno's fitting software. My oldest recollection, 
They were printed on the first generation of Fujikura speeders. If you're not familiar with EI graphs, here's one. The length of the shaft is shown along the bottom. The stiffness is shown along the vertical axis. Now, what we see here are three different shafts. We see a tensi blue, a tensi white, and a tensi orange. We can see that the blue profile here is softer in the mid. So we can say soft mid or stiff butt, stiff tip. When we look at the white profile here, we can see that it's stiffer in the midsection. Or we could say it the other way, soft butt, soft tip, in comparison to the midsection. So what do we know about these two profiles? Well, in the blue profile, if you er release early in the swing or don't put a very hard load at the end of your swing on the shaft, this is a very likely fit for you. However, if you release late, then the white profile with that stiffer mid is going to be a better fit for you. Now, what do we have in here as well? We have the Tensi Pro Orange, a new shaft. And what we see here is that compared to the white, the butt is softer and the tip is stiffer. So basically this shaft is, is tilted in that direction. And so when we change the slope of a shaft like that, it generally indicates that this shaft is going to be launching a little lower and spinning a little less, depending upon the golfer. Now, what else do we see on this profile? Well, we see this stiffness in the tip. We see this little bump over here. And that little bump is going to create stability for a very, very late releaser. Knowing these bend patterns is essential in a fitting session. An EI literate fitter understands what he's putting in your hands and is noting how you react, making sensible changes as he tests options. The key word here being sensible. When I learned about EI profiles, the only instrument I had seen was a $15,000 computer-controlled hydraulic press. I was familiar with the instrument from my earlier career in the packaging industry. I quickly decided it was much more instrument than was needed, and perhaps not even the proper instrument for measuring golf shafts. Over a period of several years and many, many prototypes, I designed and manufactured the instrument you now see. Computer-driven hydraulics were replaced with something that was much more reliable and needed no maintenance, gravity. The weight you see here is lowered and raised with a linear motor. It is applied to the press that is guided by precision linear bearings. This instrument is specifically built to measure golf shafts. And now I'm going to show you how a golf shaft is measured. It is marked inch by inch with dry erase, then put under the press, measured, moved to the next mark, measured again, and so on down the shaft for a total of 34 measurements. It's a rather tedious process, and if I had given that to you in real time, you wouldn't be here by now. But as you're doing it, you're actually entering the measurements into a computer next to you, and as you can see here on the screen, you get to watch the EI profile of a shaft develop. And it's, it's a very, very interesting process when you're doing this to see an unknown shaft come to life before your eyes. This is the page in my software that shows all of the analytics for a collection of shafts the user selects. It is a complete overview of the shaft, covering EI, torque, hoop, deflection, weight, and balance. Knowing how a golf shaft bends point by point has value beyond the EI profile. Let's quickly look at an expansion of the data. 
When I wrote the software, I created a chart that I named Signature. It is actually the first derivative, the change in stiffness from point to point down the shaft. I use this chart to see subtle differences in the shafts, and its real value to me as a fitter is understanding the consistency of shafts within a model. This example, the Project X Hazardous T1100, is a good example of consistency. When I look at the signature of the first derivative, you can see how all of these shafts have exactly the same shape. So these shafts don't change profiles as you change weight or change stiffness. Looking only at the change removes absolute stiffness of the individual shafts and reveals, for want of a better word, the stiffness pattern, or as I call it, a signature of the shaft. When I look at the signature of the first derivative, you can see how all of these shafts have exactly the same shape. Any weight, any flex, it's the same shaft. Perhaps lighter or stiffer, but the same design. In this example, the Aldola Rogue Elite Green, a design choice was made. The 70 gram versions have stiffer tips. You can see that right here, where the 60 gram versions have softer tips. This is obviously a design choice, and it's obviously intentional. Look at the consistency of the 70 gram shafts and the consistency of the 60 gram shafts. For a fitter, this is important knowledge. Change weight, change profile. And for an astute golfer, change feel. Then there is this. The product of low cost production where little value is given to consistency. When I look at products like this, I think of those that say there is little value in high cost golf shafts. When I review shafts, I ask for only one sample of each SKU. I don't see any value in measuring multiple shafts and averaging the results. I want to know if I can count on the product to be the same, shaft to shaft, no averaging allowed. The shafts are either consistent or they are not. How could I, how could anyone fit with what you see here? Dave Tuttleman said to me many years ago, when you know the point-to-point -point EI values, you can calculate many, many other things. The deflection board we looked at earlier is a great tool for shaft understanding, but it lacks numbers we can work with. Using EI values, we can calculate deflection and do so with any weight from any point. Here's an unusual shaft design, the Project X Hazardous Yellow. This has been a very successful fit for many golfers. Looking at the shaft profiles, you would wonder how this design will play out. When we calculate the deflection of both butt clamp tip loaded and tip clamped butt loaded, we see exactly how it will bend much the same way that Ralph Maltby did in the 60s with his deflection board. Let's contrast the hazardous yellow with the hazardous T1100. I'm going to flip back and forth between these two slides. Look at the tip clamped butt loaded deflection points. Over here, and here, and back again, and back again. You can see how this area of the shaft changes. There is more of a bow in the mid-zone of the yellow. As Ralph Maltby and my friend Dave Honke said years ago, you can see launch and spin when you tip clamp and butt load. There it is. That bow creates higher launch, and if you have a negative angle of attack, you should be in the hazardous yellow and not the T1100. Several years ago, Jeff Meyer, the shaft guy at a Kushner for 20 years, explained his system for rating shafts. In his words, frequency did not provide me with an accurate overall stiffness measurement as I could have two shafts with the same frequency that were significantly different in overall stiffness. A good example is a butt stiff 
soft tip shaft versus a butt soft tip tip shaft. Although they may have the same frequency, they will feel and perform significantly differently. Then I started to evaluate the ratio between tip and butt frequency as well as tip and butt deflection. Although this data is interesting and provided me with valuable information, this data still does not provide me with the awareness I was looking for. EI data became my go-to data for many years as I could overlay EI curves to study the differences between shafts. After studying EI curves for many years while working at the Akushna company, I decided to integrate the area under the EI curve. Then I used this data to compare shafts and started seeing some interesting results. The higher the total area, the overall stiffness of this shaft seemed to play. Area under the EI curve. It took a few months to sink in, but when it did, it hit me like a ton of bricks because I could actually see it in the charts. The stiffer shafts sit higher on the charts. And because the measurements were all taken with the same instrument, with the same beam, and the same weight, it's a valid way to compare shaft stiffness. Jeff validated it for years, testing golf professionals. It did not take me long in my fitting practice to come to the same conclusion. It works. And we see here how area under the EI curve considers all sections of the shaft. Wow! That's a pretty simple way to rate overall stiffness. But don't forget the essence of Jeff's message. The EI curves overlaid on each other show us the difference between golf shafts. If you want to learn more about shaft stiffness, I wrote an article in the technical section of golfshaftreviews.info. In that article are examples of Jeff Meyer's observations of frequency. On the pages of Golf Shaft Reviews, you'll find shaft stiffness rated as area under the EI curve. My system of understanding golf shafts is a collaborative effort encompassing the best ideas from a collection of golf technology experts. I hope this video gives you a better understanding of golf shaft stiffness. Please support my effort by subscribing to the Devoted Golfer YouTube channel and becoming a subscriber to Golf Shaft Reviews. Club fitting is still an art, performed by craftsmen. To get the most out of your golf clubs, find a fitting craftsman that understands both shaft and head design. Work with them and explore the fascinating world of golf gear. Find that combination of shaft and head that works best with your swing, and you'll be on your way to good golf. If you're a club fitter watching this video and want to know more about subscribing to my knowledge base, email me to start the conversation. I am Russ Ryden, owner of fit to score Golf Club Fitting in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and editor and chief of Golf Shaft Reviews. If you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and want to book a club fitting session, visit my website for more information. Thanks for spending your time with me today.